Hi, I'm Deborah Jarko, and I'm going to show you some easy ways to get started weaving with this wonderful little Louette Erica loom. One of the things I like about this loom is that it comes as a two harness. You can increase it to a four harness loom. It's really, really lightweight, so it's easy to carry around. This whole castle part just lifts up and folds down flat, so it is really a great workshop loom, or it's great if you don't have a lot of space and you need to fold up your loom after you use it. So I've, I've warped the loom, which, we'll show, which you can find in another uh, YouTube video, or um, you know, there's lots of references to help you get warped. Now this, I'm going to show you some few things about getting started with some easy weaving. So raising and lowering the harnesses. It's a little bit confusing because to raise the harness, you lower the lever. The harnesses, I have four harnesses on this loom, and they're always numbered when you look at patterns. They're numbered, uh, the harnesses are, the low numbers are the ones closest to you. So this one that I'm raising the harness by lowering the lever. That's harness one, harness two, harness three, and harness four, okay? So you can raise and lower them in combination, like there's harness one and three raised, and here's harness two and four raised, okay? So to do plain weave, which is the simplest weave structure, you go over one thread under the next, over one under the next, and then on the next row, the threads that you went under on the previous row, you go over on that row, so you're always alternating. So I'm going to do just a little bit of plain weave to show you how easy that is. I'm raising harnesses one and three, and I'm putting my weft through, okay, and then there are several different ways you can do this. You can put your weft through, you can beat, and then you can change harnesses. Okay, people ask, what is the right way to do this? There's really no right way. I find if you're consistent, that's the important thing. If you beat, okay, let's raise the harness, put the shuttle through. If I beat now, the threads here are completely open where I'm going to be. I'm beating this down. The threads are crossed on the side of the weft thread towards me, but they're completely open on the side towards the harnesses. So they meet some resistance as they're being packed down because the thread is crossed right here that they have to pack into. If instead, when I do this, I close the shed and all the threads are completely even when I beat, it meets less resistance, so it, it packs in a little bit better. If I change and I open the next shed, it's completely, um, it's flat on the side that I'm packing it into, but it's crossed on the side near the beater. So you can see that the thread meets different amounts of resistance when you beat it in, depending upon your method of leaving the shed closed, open, or into the new shed when you go to beat. And you just need to see what kind of cloth you want to weave. It doesn't really make any difference how you do it. It's just being consistent because your threads won't pack in the same if you change how you beat. So I'm putting my shuttle through. I find it easy to put my shuttle through, change sheds, and then beat. That's what I'm doing on this particular piece. So I'm putting my weft through. I'm changing sheds, and then I'm beating. So you can see here that I've done some plain weave, or just a very basic weave structure where I'm going one and three, and then two and four, and then one and three, and then two and four. My beating on this is not very even. So you can see here where this warp thread shows a lot more than that warp thread. Your aim for plain weave, it, at least my aim in this one is to have a balanced weave structure, meaning that I would have the same number of weft threads per woven inch as I have warp threads per width of inch. Okay, so depending upon what kind of cloth you're weaving, you have to decide how hard you want to beat. But usually you want to be pretty consistent. So now I'm going to do something that's a little bit different than plain weave. I'm going to do a basic twill. So I'm going to come around here and um, I'm going to do what's called a 2-2 two, two twill. So I'm going to raise harnesses 1 and 2. All right, Lower the levers, raising the harnesses. 
and I'm going to bring this in and I'm coming through and then I'm going to chain sheds and beat. So I'm going to be doing one and two, two and three, three and four, and then one and four so that I have a sequence of threads going through. Now with twill you usually have what's called a floating selvage or an edge thread that catches your weft and keeps it going all the way to the side. I didn't put a floating selvage on this, so sometimes I might have to manually go around the edge thread in order to make sure that it's caught in my weaving pattern. So one and two, I'm ready for three and four. Putting this one through, okay. One and four, okay. So I completed the one and two, two and three, three and four, and then one and four. All right, I'm gonna go back to one and two. So I didn't leave myself enough slack. One and two. Two and three. And you can, well, no, I caught it there. Two and three. And I'm going to three and four. And then I'll go to one and four. So you can see here how this makes a completely different pattern. Here I've got the plain weave, which is just a basic grid, and here I have these wonderful diagonal lines. There are all sorts of different patterns that you can weave into your cloth, and those are what your weaving reference books are for. And you can find a lot more information at louette.com.